Okay, so now that we are getting into, uh, starting to move closer into the summer, and things are a lot of things are starting to go back to normal, where you can go on more trips and things like that, I thought it'd be a good time to share some tips and reminders about having a frugal vacation. So to me, a frugal vacation, um, of course, isn't about not you know spending or not spending a certain amount of money. It's more about um, making sure that you have identified the money that you want to spend and kind of stick to that amount so that you don't come back afterwards and find out that you now are short in your money for other things that you had planned on doing or using it for or saving or whatever. So with that being said, probably the most important part when I'm planning my vacation and I think is really important to do is creating a budget. No matter the length of your trip, it's really important to set up some type of budget because even a day trip can wind up costing you a lot more than you expected if you don't set a budget for it. So of course, if you're just doing a day trip, there's not all that much to consider, but when you're going away for a few days to a week, there's a lot more cost involved. And if you don't set a budget, there's a good chance that you'll end up spending more than you think you will. And often more than you think you will spend is often more than you had available to spend. So spending money on vacation can end up causing stress during the trip if you're not clear on how much you have available to be spending on various things. And you don't wanna be stressing out while you're on your vacation, trying to have a nice time, and every time you spend money, you're wondering how much money you've spent so far, if you spent more than you should have, how much do you have available to spend. So by having a budget in place and knowing how much you have available for this trip, can really help ease some of that stress because you already know that whatever you're spending on, as long as it's within that budget that you created, it's not gonna cause any financial issues when you return from your trip. And just make sure, just to be sure that I'm clear here, creating a budget for your vacation does not mean that you're being cheap. It's just like when we say frugal is not about being cheap, you're prioritizing how you spend your money. So unless you have an unlimited source of funds, which I don't think most of us do, um, setting up a budget for your trip is a good idea. If you don't have money saved up for your trip yet, it'll help you decide how much you need to save. And if you already have money saved up, it'll help you make sure that you have enough saved up. And if not, maybe then you'll realize, okay, well, maybe we need to save up a little bit more if we wanna do all these things. Or you might maybe look at your uh, budget and say, okay, well, we only have this much available. How, is there anything in here that we're willing to cut? And if not, then you would go for the other option of saying, okay, well, we're gonna need to save a little bit more if you wanna do these things that we had planned on doing. Because your budget is just a plan on how you wanna spend your money. So you can have an expensive vacation and still be frugal about it. Being frugal doesn't mean that you're not spending money, it means you're prioritizing how you spend your money. And your budget just helps you decide how you want to spend it. So that can be lower cost or higher cost, it's really up to you, but by having a budget in place, you are in control and you're deciding rather than just waiting until you're on this vacation and then maybe spending more than you really should have and then coming back and feel, feeling guilty about it. You also wanna try and create your budget early if you can because allowing yourself time to make adjustments to your budget will help you get a better plan together. As time goes by, you'll often think of some things that you didn't think of at first that you'd like to add to your budget. You know, you, sometimes you'll just be walking around and suddenly something happens and that makes you think like, oh, I should, I should uh, make sure that I add that to my budget for the vacation. We'll probably maybe um, have to do a drive-through on the way there or whatever. I don't know, you just think of certain things as more time goes on. So if you have longer periods of time to work on your budget, it'll really help you get a better budget together. And if you're not going on your vacation to like a particular attraction, like say Disney, for example, like, you know, not something that's just centered around like one main place. If you're not doing like a Disney type vacation, if you're just going to some location, um, you, wanna, you wanna be able to do some research on attractions in that area so that you can budget for some of the things you wanna do. So the earlier you start setting your budget, the more time you'll have to do some of that research and make sure you include the costs of some of these things in your budget because you don't wanna be out there and think like, oh, this is gonna be a really inexpensive vacation and then suddenly you find that there's all these things that you wanna do and you didn't plan for them and then you wind up going over budget. 
And it also gives you time to look for some free attractions too, if you wanna be able to save a little bit on some days so that you can then spend money um, on other attractions that maybe cost more. You also wanna make sure that when you're budgeting for your vacation that you really try and consider all of the costs. So the first thing that I like to do is kind of make a general layout for each day. And it's not important that you follow this plan like exactly if you don't want to. It's more just about getting down on paper like what you think your vacation as a whole will look like. And kind of just like thinking through each day from like the time you actually leave for vacation until the time you get back from vacation. So say, do you have pets that will need to be boarded before you leave? You wanna make sure you include that in your budget. Um, will you need to maybe even budget more than you think for boarding? For example, will you have um, maybe a day before or after that you have to budget for boarding an animal because maybe there's certain drop off or pick up times that you might um, not be able to pick them up or drop them off at a certain time which, which causes you to have them to either drop them off a day earlier or drop them off a day later. Um, that might wind up causing extra costs for boarding. Will you need to buy snacks and drinks for the road? Um, how much gas will there be to get to your destination? Um, and how much gas might you need to use while you're actually at the destination? Are you gonna be doing a lot of driving while you're there? Are there tolls involved? I know this isn't the case maybe throughout the entire country, but when we drove from New Jersey to Salem, Massachusetts for a vacation, we paid a lot in tolls along the way. So that's something to include in estimating the cost of the total vacation. You might also wanna consider if your hotel that you're staying at charges parking fees. A lot of um, hotels now charge a fee um, even just to park in their parking lot. Even if they don't have like valet parking or whatever, they'll charge like a daily fee and that can kind of add up to quite a bit of money. So just look into that also. And then consider how much will you be dining out? What types of restaurants? Will it be more sit down dinners or will it be quicker meals? Um, will you be buying food or drinks to keep at your hotel or wherever you're staying? Um, are there any entry fees to be considered for theme parks, museums, or any other activities that you're gonna be doing on the trip? You wanna really try and think through um, as much detail as possible of all the things that you might be doing while you're on vacation to think of all the costs because all of these things add up to a lot and if you're missing some of these big um, categories you could wind up spending a lot more money than you thought you were going to so the more you can kind of think through what your vacation days are going to look like and what expenses might be associated with that the, the better um, of a budget you can come up with. And then of course there's always miscellaneous costs. <laughs> I always include some miscellaneous dollars in our vacation budget to allow for things that might come up on the trip that you're just not planning for. You know, maybe um, your kids want to, you want to get your kids some fancy desserts like while you're walking around a downtown area and you go into maybe like a little ice cream shop or something or, or like a little um, bakery or whatever. Or maybe you see an exhibit that you weren't planning on and you decide to just go, go do that. It's always good to have just some miscellaneous dollars budgeted to cover those things and, and even just more just as like an extra cushion because you don't want to have such a tight vacation budget that if something goes wrong, then you're totally immediately off budget. It's good to just have like a little bit of extra cushion in there because you never know sometimes the cost of something goes up or like I said, maybe you decide you want to go into something you didn't plan on or get some uh, nice uh, desserts or a fancy coffee while you're walking around town or something like that. If, you know, and if adding any little extra dollars throws your vacation over budget as far as the total amount that you wanted to spend or the amount that you have available, um, then it gives you an opportunity ahead of time to really look at the budget and see if there's anywhere else you can cut back a little bit so that you can leave some of that wiggle room in there for something that might come up that you weren't anticipating because something is gonna come up almost every time while you're on vacation that you didn't specifically plan for. So you really wanna try and add a little bit of cushion in there for some miscellaneous spending that might happen. And dining, just like in everyday life, dining on vacation is usually one of the largest variable costs we have. So we can keep the spending pretty low by buying food to cook ourselves, or we can go really high end and eat at like restaurants for fancy meals. Either way you go, it's a good idea to decide 
kind of in general what your dining plans will be like for the trip so that you have some type of idea how much money it's going to cost you that you're going to need to put aside for dining out. So when you see the cost of doing a sit-down dinner each night, maybe you might decide, okay, we'll only do half of those sit-down dinners and we'll save that money for something else. You know, you kind of want to see it down on paper. Sometimes you don't really think of it, you know, if you estimate like how much it costs for your family to go out to dinner every night for like seven days and you see that total, you're like, wow, that's a lot of money. Maybe we do half of those. So whether you decide to do that, do all of those meals or not, putting it down on paper can kind of give you a good perspective of what kind of dollars you're talking about and let you decide if that's what you want to do or if maybe you'd rather um, spend that money a little bit differently. So for my family, what I find works the easiest for us is to budget a flat dollar amount of di for dining per day. Um, I do budget it as for the whole time, obviously, but to manage it, for me, it's easier to manage it on a daily basis. So that way at the end of the day, I can look and see like, okay, how did we track to the budget to that daily dining amount? And then if we did overspend, we can say, okay, we spent too much on dining today, or we spent above, not too much, but we spent over our budgeted amount um, for dining today. So tomorrow, maybe we'll just pick up some sandwiches for lunch, or we'll do something like a lot less expensive, and then it'll kind of even out. So I just kind of track it day by day, and it kind of helps us decide what we're going to do the next day. If we're a little bit under, maybe we go do a sit-down meal. If we ran a little bit over the day before, then the next day we cut back a little bit and maybe cut out some extras, or everyone gets water at dinner, which is what I usually try and do anyway. But on vacation, sometimes the family, my kids convince me to let them get soda or whatever. So, you know, maybe you say, okay, well, we're going to just get waters today, no desserts, I don't know, whatever. You can make some modifications if you know you came in a little bit higher on the previous day. So before going on vacation to an area that we're not familiar with also, um, I usually do some research using TripAdvisor on the local restaurants in the area. So you can read reviews and get ideas about prices so that you have some places in mind before you start your trip. Sometimes I'll even do a search for like best cheap eats in whatever location we're going to. That way you can get some good options for days that you might need to maybe recoup from a day that you might have exceeded your daily budget or even if you just want to do a generally lower cost dining throughout the entire vacation, it'll give you some good ideas on where to go because it's the worst when you just randomly show up at a restaurant and you sit down and you look at the menu and it's like all super expensive food and you just want to like get up and walk out because you're like, oh my God, we can't afford this place. So, um, looking uh looking at some of these places before you go into the on onto the vacation or go into the town to let you kind of know like what restaurants are more in your price range can be really helpful um, before you get out there and then another option of course is considering getting a room um, or if you're renting a house or whatever obviously you would have a kitchen but if you're getting a hotel room um, you know it's always a good idea to at least consider um, what it would cost to get you a room with a kitchen because depending on the cost of dining out in the location um, where you're staying, this can end up saving you a lot of money. But it also depends on the size of your family. So you just want to kind of weigh the options and say, okay, how much is it going to cost us extra per night to get a room with a kitchen? Um, and what would it cost us for food? And how does that compare to what it would cost us to go out to eat? Because to me, if it's going to be cheaper to go out to eat, then I'd rather just go out to eat. Um, you know, if it's if it's going to save a lot of money to cook at home, um, you know, then then by getting that kitchen, then I, I don't mind doing that. But I don't necessarily want to cook on vacation if I don't have to. Um, we did rent a cabin at Disney one time, and we cooked a lot of meals there. Um, but that was like fun. Like we had just like different things that we cooked in the oven and we got like some microwave foods and things like that. So just depending on your family size and where you're gonna stay, um, that might be an option. But you do wanna price out all the costs involved and just make sure that you will be saving money if you're going that route. Because the thing is, is with, um, with grocery delivery being so convenient now, um, 
you don't even have to use a vacation time to go to the grocery store. So if it works out where it's a significant savings and you don't mind cooking, even if you just do some quick things that you could just pop in the oven for like certain nights just to save a little bit, maybe you buy like some frozen pizzas or like some microwave meals or things like that that you can just kind of cook up really quickly um, just to kind of fill in some gaps here and there, that might be a good option for you. Another tip is to make sure you use a packing list. So if you have a vacation packing checklist, it's, mu it's much less likely that you're gonna have to purchase. I'm so sorry, my dogs keep barking. I've moved to every room in this house and no matter where I go, I've had an ice maker that started making sounds. Um, now my dogs keep barking. I've been really hoping they would be quiet. I'm hoping they'll stop <laughs> any minute. Um, but anyway, uh, it, yeah, it's just, it's not, there's nowhere in my house that's really quiet for me to ever do this. And usually something like that winds up happening, but I don't feel like stopping this right now. So I'm gonna keep moving along and hope that the dogs keep quiet now. So anyway, using a packing list. Um, if you have a packing list, um, you're gonna be much less likely to wind up needing to purchase something like a bathing suit or sunblock or something like that because you just forgot to pack it. So I keep my packing list saved in Excel and then I continuously update them over time. So even though they might not have been like the greatest checklist when I first created them probably, I've updated them so much over the years that I feel like we really don't miss packing things. Um, because what we've done is while we're on vacation, if we realize that there's something that we should have packed, I'll make a little note of it. And then when we get back from vacation, I open up my spreadsheet and I add that item to the list so that I make sure we don't forget the same thing in the future. And then I do kind of um, separate the list into lists for different types of trips. Like, so for example, um, a camping trip list checklist would have different items on it than if we were gonna go stay in a hotel. So that way I'm not looking through like a list of everything we could possibly need no matter where we're going. It's more geared toward like the type of vacation, um, but it's just really helpful and it, and it helps us from um, having to wind up buying things um, that we already have at home on vacation because we forgot them at home. And oftentimes, you know, when you're on vacation, you're in a touristy area sometimes, and then the cost of these items are gonna be even more expensive. So not only are you buying something that you didn't even need, you're probably paying a lot more money for it. So using a checklist to pack can be really helpful for that to make sure that you're not forgetting things um, that you really need to have while you're on your vacation. And then of course, um, tracking your expenses. So as always, tracking your expenses is so important to sticking to your budget. There's nothing worse than coming home from a great vacation to find out that you overspent your budget by a significant amount of money. So while you're on your trip, if you could try and have some mechanism to track your expenses, that could be a notebook, a spreadsheet, an app, whatever you like to use to keep track of your expenses. I use an app called Budget. I think it's just called Budget. And I use the free version, so it only gives you three categories of budget. So I keep it really simple and I just have meals, gas, and miscellaneous. I might change that depending on the trip that we're going on, if it makes more sense to categorize in a different way. Um, but that kind of works for me because it's just, I use it basically just to track our expenses each day. And then I do usually have my laptop and I'll update like our actual detailed budget on my laptop, like later on at night, maybe when we're at the hotel or every couple days. But this is more just to um, keep on track, keep on top of expenses as we're spending them. Um, because I always have my phone with me. So as soon as an expense occurs, I record it in the app right away because it's so easy to make a purchase on vacation and completely forget about it by the end of the day. Because you're just, you're, you know, you're on vacation, you're having fun. You don't think like, oh yeah, we got, we bought like um, five Sundays for the family and that costs like an extra 35 bucks or 40 bucks or whatever. Ice cream's really expensive. Um, and then, oh yeah, and then we also stopped in the arcade after we were done at the ice cream shop and we let the kids play like, you know, $20 worth of games. So that was like another almost $60 right there. Like these things just kind of happen sometimes when you're on vacation and you're not really thinking of it. So I find that by recording them, like as soon as they happen, um, it just helps me see what we've spent so far that day and not get too carried away with spending money if we have a certain amount that we um, have to spend for that day and we are getting close to it. So the thing is though, by knowing where you're at with your budget during your trip, you can make other decisions um, about purchases you may or may not want to make while you're on your trip. So just kind of having that tracking of knowing where, what you've spent so far and where you're at 
compared to what you budgeted for the entire trip can really kind of help you um, make some decisions whether you you're overspending or underspending i mean if you if you're coming under budget a lot so far because you didn't spend as much as you thought you were then maybe you know you'll you might say oh yeah let's do that boat trip or whatever because we're really far under and we can definitely afford that in our budget now where if you're not tracking you really don't know sometimes if you have enough money left to do certain extra things that might come up and then my last tip for budgeting on a frugal but for tips for a frugal vacation is be mindful of YOLOs. So <laughs> the equivalent of impulse spending in regular life are those big expenses you can rack up on your vacation because you only live once. Yes, it's true you do only live once, but just like you wouldn't spend wildly above your means in daily life, it's not a great idea to do this on vacation either. I've definitely had my share of you only live once expenses on my vacation to come home to a credit card bills that I could not pay off. So while at the time it seems fun to just take advantage of everything possible, it's really often not worth, or probably never not really worth um, coming home having to deal with the financial aftermath if it's really gonna hurt you um, financially and you don't have anywhere to pull that money from. Of course, if you have it in your budget to do these things, or you say, well, you know, we have that little bit of extra savings that we were gonna do this with, we could use that to do this. And you kind of have a source for it. That's one thing. It's when you really get carried away and you have no way to pay for something and you decide to just do it just because you're on vacation and you're having fun and you just wanna do it on a whim. Just don't set yourself up to come back and have to deal with a financial mess that you shouldn't have to deal with because you are there, you have a budget, you're tracking your expenses. So just try and kind of be mindful of those types of things that maybe are a little bit above your means right now um, and might not be as great of an experience to equal the fact that when you come back, you're gonna, gonna now have to figure out how to pay for all this stuff that you spent that you really didn't have the money for. So that's it for today. That's my tips for a frugal vacation. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget you can email me with any questions or suggestions at lolasfrugallife at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at lolasfrugallife. You can find blog posts for each episode on my website at lolasfrugallife.com. You can join our private listeners group at facebook.com slash groups slash Lola's Frugal Life. And if you enjoy the show, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen from. And I would love it if you would screenshot the show and tag me on Instagram so I could see your listening. Also, if you could please take a couple of seconds to rate and review the podcast, that would be really helpful to me. And there's a link to financially support the show in the episode details if that's something you're interested in. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a really awesome day.